Today we'll look at how to import plies from FiberSim to make a laminate composite in SimCenter 3D. We've opened our geometry, which is a winglet, and we're creating our simulation files and a linear static solution. We'll begin by preparing the geometry for simulation. Here we have a growth shape, which we'd like to turn into a net shape. So I'll get an associative copy of the sheet body and the curves that I'd like to use to trim it into a net shape. And we're doing this in the idealized part. Then we'll do a trim sheet where we'll keep the interior and trim using this as an exterior curve. And we'll do that normal to the face to project those curves. Now that we have the net shape, we can bring that into our finite element model. Now we've defined the material names in FiberSim, which we're going to be importing the plies from shortly. However, we'd like to define the material physical properties using SimCenter 3D. And here I have a library that has all of the materials that we plan to use, which also has all of the physical properties assigned. Now those physical properties could be assigned in FiberSim and imported directly, but you'll be seeing in just a moment that we're going to not use those materials. So here we'll create a shell mesh on our geometry and we'll edit the mesh associated data to align the material orientation vector with the XC axis. This will help to reduce the number of zones that are created when we import our laminate and we also want to make sure we're getting the thickness data from the physical property table which we'll define next as a laminate and we're going to import or inherit the properties from our layup. We'll pick our favorite ply failure theory and shear stress for bonding. Now if you don't have the laminate toolbar you can turn it on by right clicking in the toolbar area then we'll select import fiber sim layup and we'll select an H5 file here is the output from FiberSim, and here's where we're not going to select import material physical properties. We're going to use those that already exist in SimCenter 3D and the FEM. And we'll give the layup a name. Here you can see we've imported 53 plies. We'll go ahead and update our global layups and zones. And here we can step through the plies to see where the plies are applied to the geometry. Here you can see where they don't apply to all of the geometry. You can see the elements that the plies apply to. Now if we'd like, we can also take a core sample by saying view laminate, select a single element, and we can see all of the plies that exist in that location. We can also see the ply sketcher shows us a graphical view of the thickness and angle of the various plies as well as the composition. All right, now that we've got the finite element model defined, let's go ahead and create some constraints. We'll go ahead and fix an edge here. And we have some arrow loads that we'd like to bring uh, and apply to our winglet. So to do that, we'll create a pressure load. We'll select the tangent polygon faces to select the geometry to apply the load to. And our arrow load is a table that consists of XYZ, which is Cartesian. And we'll go ahead and interpolate that onto our shell mesh using a Delaunay interpolator. So there's our arrow loads in the form of XYZ and pressure that will map onto our shell mesh. Here we can plot the contours of those arrow loads
Now that we have our model defined, we can go ahead and solve it. Here this uh, is a live solve. It only takes three seconds to run. And we can view our results. First, we're mainly concerned with our displacement results. We want to ensure that the wing tip under these aero loads does not exceed nine tenths of an inch. And you can see we're a little over one inch here. So to meet that requirement, what we'll do is we'll add a few plies. Now we could ask the laminate designer for a few more plies. However, we can do that right here in SimCenter 3D. We'd like to copy ply 8. Here we can see where ply 8 is applied. So we'll go ahead and edit the layup directly in SimCenter 3D. Here we'll select ply 8 and we'll copy it. And then we'll go ahead and paste it directly above that ply. And I'm going to paste it three times. And there you can see the three plies above our ply 8 that we copied. So that gets the composition, thickness, and ankle. Alright, now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and update our global layups and zones. And we're ready to solve and get our updated results. To keep our original results, I'll just take one additional step and clone that solution. And we'll rename it to S1P3 for the additional three plies. And then we'll go ahead and solve it. And in another three seconds, we'll have updated results. Let's take a look at those results side by side with our original results. So here on the left, we'll plot our original results showing tip deflection over one inch. And on the right, we'll plot our updated results with the additional three plies. We'll synchronize our views and you can see that now we're below nine tenths of an inch. All right, so we've met our deflection requirements. Let's take a look at our ply stresses next. So here we can see our stresses for ply number one in the XX direction and YY direction. We can step through every ply and review those results. But what we're really after are the critical plies, those plies that have the maximum stress in them. To find that, what we can do is create a laminate post report. We'll select our solution, S1P3, and our load case that we'd like to create a post report of. Then we'll define our graphical post report with inputs of being solver ply stresses and strains. Our outputs are going to be ply stresses and failure index. And we'll envelope just across the ply results since we only have one load case. But you could envelope across load cases as well. Then we'll go ahead and generate our post report. I've paused the movie here. It takes about a minute to generate. And then we can review our laminate post report. Here we can see our max absolute stresses. We'll take a look at XX first. And then we can overlay on top of that our global, our critical global ply ID. So here you can see not only what the stress is, but what ply has that stress. So there's YY. You can also take a look at our max absolute failure index. And that also has the critical ply ID overlaid on the elements. All right, so now that we've done that and we've confirmed that uh, we have a good layup, let's go ahead and share this layup back with the FiberSim designer. Here we can do that by exporting the plies to FiberSim as an H5 file. Here I'll call this three plies and we'll write it out. Thank you.